Hey, hey Summit Park, Park kids. kids, roll the title sequence. No matter where you're watching Sir Some today, we are so glad you're joining us. Here's the thing, so Up Park Kids isn't just for the weekend. It happens all week long. You can get involved by subscribing to Some Up Park Kids YouTube or having your parents follow Some Up Park Kids on Instagram. And don't forget to tag Some Up Park Kids and use the hashtag Some Up Park Kids every time you post. One way you can use that hashtag is by posting a video of you doing the big idea, which we're gonna do right now. It's big idea time! Today's big idea is Jesus helps me wake up, move, and live forever. Now we need some motions, so Landon, you got some for us? I've got some motions for us. Today our motions are going to be Jesus helps me wake up, move, and live forever. All right, let's do it all together loud and proud on the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus helps me wake up, move, and live forever. Okay, one more time, let's do it on the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus helps me wake up, move, and live forever. Great job, guys. You guys can sit back down and remember to tag Summer Park Kids when you post those videos. It's time for Celebration Station! Choo choo! Each week we'll shout Hey, 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 hey! So there's this thing that I really, really like. What is it? You could say I even love them. What is it? Well, it, my mom, but, but also birthdays! <laughs> Happy birthday to Isaiah, Ezra, Kinley, Taryn, Ella, Charlie, Marley, Titus, and Allison. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. We hope you guys have the best, best birthday ever. ever. All right, guys, let's jump on to what we have next. What do we have next, Michaela? All right, we have our big word challenge. Let's go. All right, our big word challenge comes from Romans 10, 9. Do you guys want to hear it? I want to I hear it. All right, it comes from Romans 10, 9, and it says this. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You guys might have noticed that we do the big word challenge all the time. All the time. Every week. The reason we do is because we think it is so important to hide God's words in our heart. That means that we take the time to remember the things that the Bible says. We really believe that God's word is chock full of lessons on how we should live today. Memorizing verses helps us know in the moment how God thinks we should act. That's right, we wanna hide God's word in our heart so we can have it when we have a sad day, a bad day, or a really, really rad day. The Bible is God's word and God's word is good stuff. It's offering time. Offering is another way to worship. It shows God that we love him more than anything we could ever buy because we wanna spend our money on him. And here's what's really cool. When we give, God takes our offering and multiplies it and makes it worth even more. Then he uses it to build his kingdom here on earth. So every time you give, you're helping God build his kingdom. If you guys are here at church, we want you to bring your offering to the offering box at the info bar in the lobby. And if you're at home, you can give your offering to your parents. Your parents can then give online at the church's website. That's right. Our offering verse comes from Malachi 3.10 and it says this, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. This verse is a command from God to give faithfully, knowing that God will use it to make his kingdom grow. We can still give today. What you are giving is making an impact to the kingdom. You are a kingdom builder. That's right, you are a kingdom builder. Can you guys stand up and say that with us on the count of three? One, two, three. I am a kingdom builder. Yes, you are. You are a kingdom builder. Thank you so much for giving today. 
Before we jump into our Bible lesson, let's practice that big idea one, one more time. time. Okay, everybody stand up and we're gonna do our motions on the count of three. Are you ready? I'm ready. One, two, two three. three. Jesus helps me wake up, move, and live forever. Okay, one more time, ready? One, two, three. Jesus helps me wake up, move, and live forever. All right, we're gonna start our brand new series called Revive. So are you guys ready? I, I'm pumped, I am pumped. Hey, Summa Park kids, we are so glad you're joining us for our first week in our Revive series. Wait, what in the world does revive mean? Well, revive is a lot like respawning. So respawning means that in a video game, you usually play a character. And if that character falls off a cliff, oh no, or falls into lava, really bad, or faces destruction, yikes then you have to restart the game again because that character lost its life. If you played any video game, you probably did something to cause that character to re-enter or start over. You probably had to respawn or revive when you played a game of Duck Duck Goose or you were not fast enough to beat the runner. You probably had to respawn when you played Green Light Go, Red Light Stop and moved on the red light, right? You probably had to respond when you made a sound while playing the quiet game. Fortunately, in real life, you and I have Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate gamer and has never lost. He lived a perfect life, defeated death through resurrection, and is alive today so you and I can have life. Jesus loves you so much as a child of God. Jesus can help you know how to solve problems to make you just a better gamer in life. Actually, Ursula has a video all about this, so let's go check it out and I'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back to another Unboxes with Ursula. I'm Ursula. Remember to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe so you can see when I post a new video, which is every single week. Today, I'm opening up the Love My Neighbor Clue Box. It contains clues and fun activities today about being a child of God and being created by a perfect God. Well, boys and girls, are you guys ready? First, we need to open up our Bibles. Do you guys have your Bibles with you? All right, we're gonna open it up to Luke 18, 16, and it says this, but Jesus called the children to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I love this verse. Have you ever been told that you are unique or awesome, you are especially in God's eyes. The truth is you need to think like a child of God and have an open mind and heart to experience Jesus. You as children are unique because of your simple faith. You are special because of you wanting to trust. You are awesome because of your dependence. You are amazing because of the way you see things. All right, we have a few surprise riddles. I need your help in guessing a few things that God created that you like as a child of God. Are you ready? Okay, first riddle. Sometimes I'm a stuffed crust. Other times I'm a deep dish. I can travel and be delivered in a box. I transform from one to many slices. My best friend is a veggie called tomato. My other friend, cheese, can sweat and melt. What do you guys think I am? Did you guess a pizza? That's right. You can make a pizza by having dough, putting the sauce on it, adding cheese, and all of your other toppings. The pizza's foundation is made with the bread just as a Christian foundation is made with Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is the bread of life. Do you like pizza with thin or thick crust? Tell your friends. Okay, riddle number two. Are you guys ready? Here we go. I look like a certain shape. I am a celebrity fish. I have five arms all the same. 
I live in the sea and I grab everything I can. What do you guys think it is? Did you guess a starfish? That is right. You can make a starfish by drawing it. You can make the five sides, add a little smiley face on it, and color it in. The Bible says God created sea animals in Genesis. Can you name another creature that lives under the sea? Pineapples don't count. Okay, riddle number three. Are you ready? Here we go. You see me in the air, but I'm not a kite. I look like violet, indigo, and blue, and red, yellow, orange, and green. I'm not a pot of gold. What do you think I am? Did you guess a rainbow? Well, you're correct. You can make a rainbow by coloring another picture, putting all the colors in one, maybe putting some clouds at the end. It'd be so cute. God made the rainbow as a reminder of his promise that he will never flood the earth again. God will help things get better for us, like a rainbow coming out after a storm. All right, boys and girls, this is our last riddle. Riddle number four. I can be three to over five feet tall. Shoes help, but I'm not born with them. I am younger than a teenager, but I'm not a baby. I am a human and I have a name. Another word for me starts with a C, but not a K as in kid. What, what do you think I am? Did you guess a child? You can make a child out of a stick figure, right guys? The Bible says that you are a child of God and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That comes from Psalms 139, 14. God created billions of children, but gave you, yes you, your own look, strength, personality, and potential. We can live in confidence that God doesn't make junk and that you are a unique masterpiece to God's creative genius. All right, I have a special challenge for you. I want you to make a pizza, a sun, maybe a starfish with Play-Doh today. I created some a couple days ago and I love doing that. One beautiful truth is that Jesus allows us to be a part of God's family as children once we accept him as our Lord and Savior. You are a child of God to the most holy heavenly king, which is a reason to be glad and happy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Max with Ursula. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks, Ursula. This leads us to our first point. I'm a child of God. Can you guys say that with me on the count of three? One, two, three. I'm a child of God. It says in Galatians 3:26, for you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Today, our Bible story is found in Mark chapter five. A dad named Jairus had a daughter who was very ill. No, she didn't eat too much candy or stay up too late, but for some reason she was going to die and her dad would do anything in his power to help her get well. Jairus was a ruler in the temple and he had heard about how Jesus had been healing many people. So when he saw Jesus, he ran to meet him right away. He fell at the feet of Jesus. My daughter is sick and is about to die, he said. Please come and place your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. What did Jesus do? Did he say, give the girl two aspirin and if she isn't better by morning, give me a call? Of course not. Jesus immediately began walking with Jairus toward his house so that he could heal the girl. As they walked through the streets of the town, some men came up to Jairus and said, your daughter is dead. There is no need to bother Jesus now. Oh no, that is some bad news. Jairus had found Jesus and they were on the way to heal his daughter. And now she was dead. Jairus was heartbroken, but Jesus paid no attention to what the people said. He turned to Jairus and said, do not be afraid, only believe. When they arrived at the home of Jairus, there were many people there and they were all crying. Jesus said, why are you crying? 
The girl is not dead. She is asleep. Do you know what the people did? They laughed at Jesus. Can you imagine that? They laughed at Jesus. Jesus told all the people to leave and he took the mother and father into the room where the girl was. He took the girl by the hand and said, little girl, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began walking around the room. Her parents were amazed. What can you learn from this? Jesus has the power to wake up people from the dead. If Jesus can do that, he can do anything. Jesus can help you with a sickness, help you to be excited about life, school, doing chores, listening to your parents, and learning how to love your neighbor better. What a cool story. And Landon has a lot more on this. So Landon, on to you. Hey guys, this would be a great time to stop and circle up and talk to the people around you about what we're talking about. So we're gonna throw a question up right around here somewhere. Uh, and you guys take a second, talk about it, and we'll be right back. Okay, let's jump back in. Thanks, Michaela. What can we learn from the story of Jairus? In this story, we saw how Jairus loved his daughter and would do anything for her. That is even more true of the love of our Heavenly Father. God loves his children and will always do what is best for them. Another thing we learned from this story is that with God, all things are possible. Jairus' daughter was dead. The situation was hopeless. But Jesus said, don't be afraid, only believe. When you face what seems to be a hopeless situation, remember the words of Jesus, only believe. All right, guys, let's do a quick activity. I want you to close your eyes and whisper, God, help me believe. Close your eyes and say it. God, help me believe. Keep your eyes closed and say it a little louder. God, help me believe. Now open your eyes and shout loud. God, help me believe. Whoa, that was, that was so loud that I missed the notification that Logan is doing a new online stream about our series. Let's check in and see what Logan Live is doing. What's up guys, it is Logan Live here and we are back with another Minecraft stream. <laughs> My name is Logan, and like I said earlier, this is Logan Live. I've been so excited getting to meet each and every one of you, but I want to get to know you just a little bit more. Um, like, what, what kind of games do you guys play? Maybe, maybe board games or video games? Um, or maybe you watch a lot of gaming streams. Um, while you guys put those answers down in the chat, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Like, like Tommy had said, we are related. But it is quite, quite the, uh, quite the journey to get uh, to where we are, we are related. Tommy is actually my second cousin's aunt's dog's cat's owner's cousin's wife's husband's brother. I know, I know, it's a lot. Like that's a lot to follow. That's a lot of lineage right there. But, but it, it makes sense. Just draw it out. Draw it out. But guys, I, I've been so excited for the, for the spring season to be here and Easter is right around the corner. But guys, I, I have a little secret to tell you. I have a little secret that I want you guys to know. Can you guys keep a secret? I, I think you guys can keep a secret. Here, lean in, lean in, and I'll tell you. I'm gonna be making the ultimate Easter egg hunting farm. Yeah, that's right. It's gonna be a big field full of Easter eggs filled with lots of candy. I love candy. It's gonna have the best features too, like a water slide, um, a phone charging station, and an endless slurping machine so you won't get thirsty. I'm gonna work on building the farm and designing the eggs. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and start building the fence here, you know, going here. And then we'll get some Easter eggs going here in a little bit. Well, guys, um, we've been talking about Jairus. When when Jairus came to Jesus' feet, he fell. Like, he fell to his feet and began to plead with him. He said, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed and she will live. 
You know, even though Jairus was a really important synagogue ruler, his behavior when he got to Jesus showed that he knew that Jesus was more important and worthy of his respect. For a synagogue ruler to fall at Jesus' feet and beg for his help took great humility. What, sh what should we do when something happens when and we feel like we're having a tough time with it? You and I should go to Jesus because he is worthy and he can help us through any situation. We can start going to him through prayer because Jesus has the power to change anything. This actually leads us to our second point. God sends me power, love, and self-control. Can you guys say that with me on three? One, two, three. God sends me power, love, and self-control. Great job, guys. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So yeah, we're going, we're making this fence. But guys, I just keep, I just keep messing up. What is happening? It's like it's like I forgot how to make a fence. Uh, let, let's try the eggs for a second. Let's go. Let's go over to where we're making our eggs. Oh my gosh! What is happening? Why 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 can't I make an egg? This is this is really frustrating. What is happening? Oh my goodness! No. Okay. Wait. I need to back up. I need to back up. I need to pray and ask for God's power and help through this situation. God. I'm trying to make this farm and I could really use your divine power and help to get this done because I cannot do it on my own. God, please help me through this building project. Amen. Jairus believed that Jesus could heal his dying daughter and was pleading with him to come to his house. When a person believes God can do something that is faith, faith pleases God. When we're in a very difficult situation, we should always come to Jesus and pray, believing he can help us. Jesus always hears and answers our prayers, no matter how big or small we feel our need is. Okay, with God's help, I cannot be afraid to start over. I know God is going to help me grow. Well guys, we've got some stuff to finish up, so we're gonna go ahead and cue the Hyperloop. All right, boys and girls, we just are finishing up. So guys, I need you to start thinking about next week. I will ask each of you to submit a name on what my official Easter egg farm will be named. Your suggestion could be egg-tastic. Also, be sure to subscribe for more Logan live streams. Make sure you subscribe. I need I need the support, you know. I've got a new channel starting up and I could really use the help. All right, guys, stay cool, stay classy, and make sure to bring a friend for the next Minecraft stream. That was such a fun time with Logan live. All right, Summer Park kids, please give a round of applause to your live host at Summer Park or your host at home. They will help you find and follow Jesus too. So give them all of your attention and do as they ask.
Great job, guys. So let's go on back to wrapping up our series. Great job. This is our third and last point. I'm awake in Jesus. Can you guys say that with me on three? One, two, three. I'm awake in Jesus. Great job. It says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 5 through 6, you are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. Jesus had the power to wake up the dead. Sometimes even an alarm clock, clapping hands, singing, banging pots and pans don't work. We may be able to wake people up when they are asleep, but Jesus, he can wake up the dead with the command of his voice. All right, guys, let's, let's play a game. To start, I need everyone to stand up, stand up. Yeah, right where you are. This game is called Age Down, Heads Down. When I say out loud how old you are, you have to sit down and put your head down until everyone is called. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? All right, guys, here we go. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and 3. Well, nobody should have sat down there because nobody here is 4 or 3. Well, guys, that game's over. That wasn't very fun, was it? All right, let's, let's play a game uh, the second way that's more fun. This game is called Age Up, Jump Up. All right, guys, so stay on the ground. Stay on the ground. Everybody stay on the ground. When I say out loud how old you are, you have to stand up and keep jumping in place until I'm finished. All right, here we go. 12, 3, 11, uh, 4. Yeah, keep jumping, keep jumping, keep jumping. 10, 5, Nine, six, and eight, and seven. Yeah, keep jumping, keep jumping. All right, guys, you guys can stop. Wasn't that second one a little bit more fun? It's because you were able to stand up instead of sitting down. You were asked to keep moving instead of stop moving. You didn't know what age number was coming next, so you paid more attention. You felt more alive and awake because you found the power to rise up and to keep jumping. Jesus wants to be the source in helping you wake up fresh, recharged, and have energy each and every day. We thank Jesus for having the power that helps us when we feel helpless. Jesus has the power to wake people from the dead. If Jesus can do this, he can do anything. Jesus can help you learn how to follow and trust in him. If you decide to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, nothing can separate you from his love and his power. If you guys are ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is repeat after me. Say this prayer with me. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to be the Savior of the world. Thank you for the great love he has for each of us. Thank you that he even has the power to bring dead people back to life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you guys just prayed that prayer for the first time and you are believing in your heart that Jesus is Lord for the first time, congratulations. That is the best decision you will ever make in your life. Well, guys, I don't think we're quite finished yet, so let's go ahead and kick it on back to our hosts. Remember to ask mom and dad to log on to summerparkchurch.com slash kids. There you can find lots of resources. If you're in elementary, you can find small group guides and activity sheets as well as so much more. If you're not in kindergarten yet, we have Bible adventure videos for you to watch and picture passes and color sheets for you to print out. Thank you so much for joining us today. Make sure you post your pictures and your videos with the hashtag summerparkkids. And remember to tag summerparkkids. We love you guys. Now, don't forget to be a light. Bye. Bye.